Number 76. Assume that the change in pressure of H2S is small enough to be neglected in the following problem. And then we have letter A. Calculate the equilibrium pressures of all species in an equilibrium mixture that results from the decomposition of H2S with an initial pressure of 0.824 atm. And then they give us this equation with the corresponding kp value. So the first thing I'm going to do, since we're in the equilibrium chapter and we have a balanced equation, I got to write it down. So we have two H2S, and I see that there's coefficients here. So I'm assuming that it's going to be balanced. You could always pause the video just to give it a shot and just check to see that it's balanced. But this one looks pretty good to me. Okay. Now, they did say that we need to calculate the equilibrium pressures of all species. If they do say all species, that just means all of the compounds or the molecules in the balanced equation. So I basically have to find out the equilibrium pressure of H2S, H2, and S2 at equilibrium. Now the only thing that they gave me was they told me that H2S had an initial pressure of 0.824 atm. And whenever they're giving you stuff that you're starting with, aka initial values, automatically go right to an ice table. So as soon as you see the word initial or they're describing something at the start of a reaction, you're going right to the ice table. So we say I-C-E. Some teachers or professor call this the rice table. The R stands for the reaction, but I don't, I don't use the R. I just go to the I. Okay. So, the I in initial stands, oh, I just gave you the answer, right? The, the I in the ice table is initial. These are all of your initial concentrations or pressures. Since we're talking about pressures, we're only allowed to have pressures in our chart. And remember, if you're using your KP formula and you're using pressure, only ATM is allowed. So they gave you ATM, so we're good to go. They told us that the initial pressure of H2S was 0.824 atm. So I know this value right here. This one is 0.824. Now, the question is, what are the initial pressures for H2 and S2? Did they give me any of that information? No. So... We can assume that since we only started with H2S, we did not start with H2 and S2. So these have to be zero. Pretty simple enough. Let's now go to the C. C stands for change. So this is when your concentration is either going to increase or not concentration, but in this case, the pressures. The change is going to either increase the pressure or decrease the pressure. Always look for the zeros. Remember, if you, if you have nothing, you can only go up from there. Can't have anything that's a negative pressure. Negative pressure doesn't exist. So, since I started with zero, I would have to increase by some number on the product side. And if the product side are increasing, the reactant side is decreasing. So, this would have to be a negative. But now, since we don't know what the value is, we have to label it as a variable. And generally, the variable of choice is x. So I'm going to say that the products would be plus an x value and plus an x value. But now you just have to be careful. In this case, you have to look at the coefficients. There's two h2s, and there was no number here telling me that there was one. And that's a little color clashing. So I'll put a one here. These numbers have to go in front of the x value. So in this case, I had two h2s, so this would be plus 2x. This was only 1, so you could say plus 1x, but that's the same thing as saying plus x. And now here, this would be minus an x value, right? But you got to look at that coefficient. There's a 2 here, so this would be minus 2x. Okay, now E stands for equilibrium. Equilibrium is when you have your initial and your change coming together. So all you got to do is just sum this up. So 0.824 minus 2x is 0.824 minus 2 and then the x, right? 
0 plus 2x is the 2x, and then 0 plus x is just the x. This is a really, really handy tool, the ice table, to get your equilibrium values. Maybe I'll just move this up a little bit. Because remember, only your equilibrium values go into your KP expression. So now let's figure out what that expression is, right? We've seen it. It's this right here. KP equals the pressure of the products divided by the pressure of the reactants, and they're raised to the coefficients. So let's just write out that expression. KP equals, now just remember, only gases and aqueous are allowed. But it looks like we have all, all gases here, so that's all good. I got two products, so I need to do the pressure of H2. And it has to be raised to the coefficient. There was a 2 here. So I have to raise this to the second times by the pressure of S2. Right? And this is has a 1 coefficient in the front, so technically you would raise this to the first, but that's fine with me. Then let's do the bottom. This would be the pressure of H2S. And there's a coefficient here, there's a 2. So I have to raise this to the second. Now we know all of the values, right? This, the H2 was a 2x, the S2 was an x, the H2S was uh, 0 0.824 minus 2x, but here's the thing, guys. They said that we're going to assume the change in the pressure of H2S to be small enough to be neglected, aka left out. And the change in the pressure. How are we going to do that? Well, remember what a Kp that's being very, very, very small means, right? A Kp less than 1 means that at equilibrium, we favor the reactant side. So if you only started with reactants, right, we only started with 0.824, right, we had none of these, and we're ending with probably majoritively of this, the change is going to be so small that it doesn't really make a difference. So we're going to get rid of this and get rid of this. We do this because it just makes it so much easier for us in the calculations. Now I'm only going to take into consideration a 0.824. And then they gave me the Kp of 2.2 .2 times 10 to the negative 6th. So now we can plug everything in. Let's see. 2.2 .2 times 10 to the negative 6th equals... Um, let's see. So 2x... This is squared times an x divided by 0 0.824, and that's also squared, right? Maybe I'll put this in blue. 0 0.824, that's squared. Okay, so basically, uh, we can cross-multiply, because that's what's going on here, right? This is... This could be as a, a fraction over 1, right? So let's do 0.824 squared and then times it by 2.2 .2 times 10 to the negative 6. And now on the other side, we have to figure out what this is. So I'm going to just put this up here. I have 2x squared. That means that I have 2x times 2x. 2x squared means that you have two of the same thing. And now it's being also times by another x. So just as a refresher, remember guys, just collect all the x's and times your numbers. So 2 times 2 is 4. And then how many total x's do you have? 1, 2, 3. So this would be x to the 3rd. So I have 4x to the 3rd equals, let's see, 0 0.824 squared times 2.2 .2 times 10 to the negative 6. Try not to round here. Uh, so 1.49, I mean, a lot of numbers. 3, 7, 4, 7, 2 times 10 to the negative 6th. Now, let's 
Solve for x, we got to divide by 4 on both sides. So now we have x cubed equals this divided by 4, 3.7343, times 10 to the negative 7th. And now we need to undo the cubed. So we could do the cube root. There's a function on that on the calculator. But just remember, another way of doing a cubed to undo it is raise it to the one third. That's essentially the same as the cubed root, right? Because this is three over one. If you raise it to its inverse, all of these values gets canceled out. So I'm just going to take this and raise it to the one third as well. But remember, it's the same thing as the cube root. So now we have x equals, and now I'm going to round uh, the number. So let's see, I'm going to round this to raise it to the one third. And I get 7.2 times 10 to the negative third. And that's the molarity. Kidoki. Now hold the phone, guys, because just make sure that you answer the question. The question was we needed to calculate the equilibrium of all the species. That means I got to go back to my equilibrium line to see what my equilibrium values were for each compound or molecule. So I'm going to have to get rid of this. So pause the video if you do need uh, this math, but it's going bye-bye just for the sake of space. Okay, we can get rid of this. And now I'm just going to write out what each one of them was, right? We had H2S. We stated at equilibrium, it was 0 0.824 minus 2x. When you're doing your calculations back, you do include your change. And that change was a minus 2x. The H2 concentration was 2x. And the S2 concentration was just x. So since we have the x value, we already know that the S2 concentration is just x. So this would be 7.2 times 10 to the negative 3 molarity. Now for the H2, all we have to do is just take 2 and times it by the x, right? So 2 times 7.2 times 10 to the negative 3rd. Let's see what we get. <clears throat> So 2 times 7.2 times 10 to the negative third. I get 0. Yeah, 0. 0.014 if you round it to the two sig figs, but it would be 0. 0.0144 if we didn't care. <laughs> um, and that's that molarity. And now for this one, we have to do 0. 0.824 minus 2 times that x value, 7.2 times 10 to the negative third. And then let's see what we get. So 0.824 minus 2 times 7.2 times 10 to the negative third. And I get 0 0.8096. And if I just round this, it would be 0 0.8, I guess, 0 0.810. And that's molarity. Okay, so we found out all of the concentrations. So the H2S concentration is 0 0.810. The concentration of H2 was 0 0.014. And then the concentration of S2 is 7.2 times 10 to the negative third. So we answered letter A. Now for letter B, it says confirm that the change is small enough to be neglected. Now this kind of question is teacher or professor specific. So I would ask your teacher or professor first uh, to determine what way they want you to do this little check here. Some professors might just say, you know, look at the KP value 
if the KP value is times 10 to the negative fifth or smaller, in this case, we have times 10 to the negative sixth, you could automatically neglect your changes. Remember, a really, really small KP just means that you have majoritively uh, reactants at equilibrium. So if you are ending with reactants, I mean, we're ending with 0.81 and we started with 0.824, that, you know, signifies that, yeah, we have a KP that's really, really low and we can get rid of that change. Another thing that teachers like to do is the 5% rule in which you take your X value that you found and divide it by your initial value. And times it by 100 because you want to turn it into a percent. The percent has to be 5% or less. So let's do that way. So if I just quickly do 7.2 times 10 to the negative 3, divided by 0 0.824, and times it by 100. If I did this properly with neglecting the x, my answer should be 5 or less. So 7.2 times 10 to the negative 3rd, divided by 0.824, times it by 100. Yeah, I get like 1%, less than 1%. I get like 0.8%. So that signifies that you can neglect the X. Another way, one last final way, is if we look at the change between the initial and the final concentration, that also should be 5% or less. So how much did this really change? Well, 0.824 minus 0.81, the change between them was 0.8. 0, 1, 4. Now we take that and divide it by the initial, 0.824, and times it by 100. And that also should be 5% uh, or less. Yeah, it's like 1.7, 1.7%. So either way, there's so many different ways of doing this. Um, I'm just going to get rid of this for now. But there's just so many ways of doing it. Just ask your teacher or professor for the way that they would want you to go about this. All right? So hopefully this helps. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Let's keep rocking and rolling. Good luck on your future tests or quizzes, and I will see you all in later lessons. Bye-bye.